Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interesting episode of the Financial Insight Show. And with me in today's episode will be the chairman of uh, the Business Coalition Task Force, who is going to be sitting down with me to have an interesting conversation about uh, the, the organization he represents, as well as uh, other important pertinent matters. So stay tuned uh, for more insights on this episode. Welcome to this uh, special episode of The Fist Show. Diego Casilli, thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing Excellent. great. Yes, it's, it's so wonderful to finally get to host you on uh, you know, this uh, particular special episode to talk about uh, the Business Coalition uh, Task Force. But uh, for many of our viewers who do not know about uh, what BCT is and uh, you know, who you are, are you able to just give us a, a bit of a background about uh, BCT and what your role in BCT is so far? Yes. Well, firstly, thank you for inviting me. And um, to start off with, just to give a, a bit of background, uh, BCT started during COVID. It was um, a reaction to the harsh conditions that uh, came about through COVID and, uh, and some of the economic uh, problems that we were uh, enduring at the time. So we formed uh, an association called BCCET. Mm -hmm. uh, which then evolved into BCT. And okay. so that was, that's how it, it started. Okay, all right. And uh, from, from inception, how would you say, you know, this uh, particular grouping has evolved uh, over time in terms of, uh, uh, you know, your participation trying to assist government with its uh, activities? Well, I think it, the, the evolution has been pretty good. We have a, uh, a group that follows us, which is about 750 um, individuals. And... Um, uh, BCT itself has a membership of close to about 80, 90. Mm -hmm. um, fundamentally, I think we've um, tackled several layers of uh, policy mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to do so. Okay. And, um, you know, essentially, um, what would you say is like the primary mission for BCT itself? Well, I think the primary mission is to bring to the attention of government the difficulties that private sector, be it big or small, is uh, encountering on a daily basis to essentially operate in Zambia. So mm. we we basically listen to our members and, mm. and also to many of the um, individuals in the public and we glean information and try and find um, policy d issues that we can address that could essentially create a better platform for business to, uh, to operate from. Recently, BCT published a press release um, that obviously highlighted some of the key issues which we believe obviously are representative of uh, concerns from your membership. Are you able to just walk us through like uh, you know, uh, what some of the key issues that, uh, you know, the private sector are trying to bring out to bring to the attention of government to address? Look, I don't believe there's anything new uh, that we're bringing to the table. I think uh, government is very well aware of the severity of the drought and um, the uh, problems that we're encountering with, uh, with energy. Um, most of us are on three to four hours a day of power. This is not sustainable for a business environment. Um, short term, there doesn't seem to be uh, a lot that can be done about it, but there are long-term measures that can be um, can be started today that could fundamentally help us in the future. But um, mm -hmm. I think what we have tried to address is um, a few mitigating points. For example, reducing the cost of how business um, addresses its immediate um, energy needs. It mm -hmm. could be um, duty waivers on certain products. Um, it could be fast-tracking Zimmer approvals mm -hmm. and the like. Okay. Now, obviously, this uh, would you say that you know, like the concerns that were raised in the recent press release are representative of the entire membership, uh, in f being a, being private sector led. That is. Well, I'd go further. I'd say it's uh, representative of every single Zambian, and I think that that's what uh, BCT stands for. We uh, mm -hmm. try to create policy that doesn't just represent the few, but represents the all. Um, we're all short on, on, on power. We all are very distressed by the current situation. And I think uh, the measures that we um, requested in our, in our statement are measures that benefit all Zambians and all people operating in Zambia. Considering that, uh, you know, you're highly representative of, uh, you know, the basically aspirations of private sector and Zambians in general, what would you say is could be could serve as an example of some of the issues that BCT has addressed in the past that you can point at to say that this was successful? 
Well, firstly, I wouldn't say that the word successful should be brought into this discussion. Mm. What we have addressed, we have addressed um, currency, mm. we've addressed taxation, mm. we've addressed employment, we've addressed statutory bodies, and um, we've ad addressed energy. Uh, these are the five major points that we've addressed. Uh, to date, I can say that uh, we are still uh, waiting for results from that um, exercise. Um, and I think that um, we live in hope that uh, at some point in time, uh, we will get the desired reactions or um, policy changes. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll deviate a little bit um, uh, because uh, we also want to just find out in terms of, uh, of impact because you've uh, eloquently elaborated you know, how coming together as private sector can bring meaningful change. Um, what would you say is, you know, in, in your view, some of the more tangible things that you would, you know, as, as BCT, you would like to see for growth to actually be achieved in Zambia? Well, firstly, I think um, many of the points are in our papers, um, which are currently on, on our websites. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's be um, very specific here to, to a certain extent. The, the cost of doing a business in Zambia has always been high. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a factor that has um, essentially plagued us for the last 20 years. Um, we can start with um, the cost of funding mm -hmm. or the, cost of the, the availability of funding, uh, in, in, in fact. So uh, um, availability of funding is, is already a, a problem and it's scarce. But the cost of funding has been a major issue, and um, what we've seen in the last um, four to five years is a increase in that cost, relating to the um, essentially the credit rating of our country. So um, as uh, our credit rating declined, the interest rate increased, and that mm -hmm. cost of doing business impact has been, uh, I think, detrimental to many. Um, then. Uh, the, the issue about actually finding funding, that, that mm -hmm. challenge in itself, I think is becoming uh, even more onerous at the moment. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, it's um, easy for any business, large or small, to, um, to essentially get hold of funders uh, that are prepared to invest. Um, and this is all a consequence of uh, profitability. Mm -hmm. um, is Zambia a profitable destination um, to invest in? The, that is a question that I think everybody should be asking themselves. Um, my personal opinion is at the moment, at this point in time, um, it, is, it is difficult to make the kind of returns that funders are targeting. Mm -hmm. um, and that continues to be a major problem. Then there's the fact that I'd say coming into Zambia as an investor is very easy. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, the hurdles of actually creating a company, registering yourself and essentially um, starting the, the, the initial process is, is simple. The real problem is um, how you eventually have to deal with the many facets of our bureaucracy. Mm -hmm. And that only comes in once you've established yourself and start actually operating. And I would say that that um, level of bureaucracy is a major hindrance to investment today. Mm. Um, from your experience, um, is meritocracy an issue that also, um, you know, begs to be addressed as well. Um, you've obviously, you know, been, uh, been, uh, you know, operate, operating for, for several years as a business. Um, do you feel that, uh, you know, that is something that is also uh, lacking? Absolutely. Absolutely. Meritocracy in business exists. I mean, uh, most business people will hire the best man for the job at the uh, rates that they can afford. So I think that uh, debating meritocracy amongst uh, the business community or private mm -hmm. sector, large or small, is, is not, not really the point. But I think that uh, meritocracy at uh, government level mm -hmm. needs a lot of work, and there definitely are major gaps that need to be addressed. Right. Um, regulation has been something that we've also picked up that uh, many in private sector have uh, you know, complained about. Is that something that BCT members have obviously brought up, and have you also officially raised this issue uh, with the government? Yes, uh, the issue is raised uh, continuously, and um, the best way to describe it is that we, we as private sector feel that we get bombarded mm -hmm. on a weekly, monthly basis by legislation changes that we need to comply with. And this bombardment is starting to create fatigue. And when mm -hmm. I say fatigue, serious fatigue, many businessmen do not know how to cope with the level of change that these uh, policy re requirements 
impose on us. Mm. And um, we bring this to the attention of government in many forms and shapes. Yet um, there's been no um, slowdown mm -hmm. in, that, uh, in that process. And we are very concerned that um, at some point in time, the fatigue that it's creating could lead to people actually making the decision to eject themselves from this economy in one format or the other. For example, mm -hmm. retirement, mm -hmm. just to cash in what you've got and say, okay, well, I'm going to sit on the sideline now mm -hmm. and watch, which could lead to job losses. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, looking ahead um, for BCT, um, with, the, with, the, you know, with, the, with the turbulence that's there economically, um, what would you say are you know, the primary goals? aside from you know, staying alive in business, but the primary goals uh, over the next uh, three to five years? Well, I think the primary goal is staying alive. Mm -hmm. And um, let's, let's be frank, uh, with the current uh, energy crisis that we're facing, uh, the choice of how you stay alive is becoming more and more difficult to, um, to find. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the choices we have available for businessmen to actually cope with the energy shortage are immense. I mean, let me give you an example. I mean, if you price uh, one megawatt of solar power at um, plus minus a million United States dollars, mm -hmm. it's an enormous capital outlay mm -hmm. that um, business will need to find just to produce one megawatt. And uh, that is not productive money spent. It's, it's productive in the sense that it creates energy, and that, I, and that is an absolute requirement. But it's not actually adding any growth to the model. Um, and also the fact that uh, if you do make the decision to spend that kind of money on, on, on increasing your, your personal energy um, needs, you do it at the expense of not doing something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, So um, there is a major concern. I mean, the energy crisis is definitely going to be a factor going forward for many of us to decide on how we invest and what to invest in. So. Um, that I would believe is, is, is probably fundamental today to um, to any businessman's um, plans. Absolutely. So, in, in short, would you say that you know BCT will continue aggressively engaging with government to see if you know amicable solutions can actually be found? Listen, we have no choice. We we have to engage. I mean, there's no other way. Um, fundamentally, though, as I said, many of us will maybe make plans to to um, buy out of the race and. Um, <laughs> cash in your chips, leave the table, uh, whichever way you want to describe it. Mm. Um, is the situation uh, at the moment uh, to our liking? Absolutely not. Um, we are not in an inner or outer circle of advisors to government. Mm. We are only a lobby group on policy. Right. Um, the impact we've had so far, as I said, we are waiting for results. We do not believe that we've had any impact to date mm -hmm. of anything notable. Right. Okay. Um, our concerns over currency are probably um, at this point in time, um, leading our, our list of many um, concerns. Mm -hmm. We know there's an SI coming. Mm -hmm. um, we have no real insight as to what that SI will be. Mm -hmm. And um, I think most businessmen and private individuals in Zambia are concerned. Mm -hmm. And whatever the outcome of that SI will be, there will be um, various uh, pushbacks from various parts of our economy. Now, Mr. Vasili, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me in this episode. Uh, we look forward to engaging with you uh, at a later date to find out uh, as, you know, as uh, BCT relations with government obviously evolve and uh, any key outcomes actually come out so we can get your insights. Well, I hope to be here to, to eventually discuss what the outcome of our budget mm. will be after yeah. today. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, you know, this will be a very interesting um, yeah. dissection of, of, of the problem. Absolutely. And Financial Insight is covering the budget uh, today, so Excellent. we'll definitely uh, be uh, bringing more insights for our, our, of our viewers, and we'll definitely reach out for your commentary around that. Thank you very much. Right. To our viewers, thank you so much for watching this episode. I've been speaking to the chairperson of uh, the Business Coalition Task Force, Mr. Diego Casilli. Stay tuned for more insights on the Financial Insight platforms and get to know.